Okay, it is the second part of the first week. So this is Mastering Healthcare, as you can see, right, where, where is that, right up, right up there? You can see that, uh, Mastering Healthcare, Terminology 6 Edition. This is a little bit different than the one I did before because the other one I just had a, a blank, black, blank, black, 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 blank background. It was blurry. I didn't have this OBS thing here. So this is uh, Mastering Healthcare Terminology by um, Betsy Shiland. This is Chapter Two, so this is bone structure and directional terminology. That means the directions that we are in relation to where we are. Okay, so we're just gonna, this is only 36 um, slides, so it's probably gonna be pretty quick, I hope. Okay, let me get it kind of comfortable here. Got my uh, self set up, make sure everything's lined up. Good, lesson two, one. All right, recognize and use terms associated with the organization of the body. First term we have is going to be um, really anatomical position. And let me show you. With this guy, so I'm gonna show you kind of half of him. So, so see, see this guy here. His hand is down at his side, and the thumb is pointing out, and he's like, you know, we're looking at the front of him, so that when you're looking at him, you're seeing his right shoulder is on your left, and his left shoulder is on your right. You get it? Like you're looking at the patient in the bed. That is called anatomical position. Now, th this hand is here just for. Uh, explanation of some other stuff but anyway <clears throat> in through here we've got anatomical position so everything is based on this okay no matter it's based on this not on where he is in space so if he's lying this way or this way or this way or this way or whatever it is it's all going to be based on this okay so that's important so we're going to start off and you can see the other videos that i've done because i've done other ones on <clears throat> the organism and then how it's made up of organ systems and organ systems are made up of organs which we're working together to make organ systems and then the organs are made up of tissues that work together to make organs and then the tissues are made up of cells that work together to make the tissues and then the cells are made up of um, organelles which are tiny bits of cells and then or actually they're tiny organs of cells organelles little tiny organs the other french word l right and um uh, smaller than that of course we have like molecules macromolecules biological um important molecules like amino acids and stuff like that cholesterol um carbohydrates proteins fats lipids all this kind of stuff and before that you get into atoms so we're gonna probably talk about that too here so as we see here it goes from the organ the human organism down you know through through size one of seven there's only seven slides in this one what what is going on here homeostasis so homeostasis is one of the first questions you guys get asked in here is homeo means um well stasis means to be stable and homeo means same same stability okay so we have it in here energy conservation through metabolism anabolism and catabolism so i have many ways to explain this kind of stuff think of catabolism is when things break down think of a catastrophe right everything is broken down anabolism like anabolic steroids the other guys who get the shots you know with westerol and all that kind of stuff anabolic steroids makes you big makes bigger things that's the difference that's how to remember them okay so cats tear things up catastrophe okay so anabolism so the the end the end point of all your anabolic issues in your body, anabolism, and all your catabolic things going on in your body, so whatever you're building or whatever you're breaking down, is the metabolism. That does create heat and some other you know good stuff that we need, and carbon dioxide, which we get rid of, and water is produced, and that's a problem, uh, that process as well. So organization of the human body. Cell components, we have the cell membrane, cytoplasm, life is okay. In my other videos, probably better to watch my other videos on um, cells and initial parts of probably anatomy and physiology, if you guys are taking this. is This is all for terminology. However, it's all the same information back and forth. So if you're taking this and then later on you have to take an anatomy class, you guys are going to be fine and dandy. Okay. Cell components, we have the cell membrane. Cell membrane covers the cell. Um, I'm trying to find like a prop to use okay so like this is this is imagine this is a cell it has a covering around it and that's called the um cytoplasm or the, the sorry the the um the uh wow i just forgot cell membrane that's it phospholipid bilayer that's what to remember cytoplasm is the stuff inside inside there you're going to have things like these things called lysosomes okay up here where up there so these things called lysosomes ribosomes and mitochondrion 
there's other stuff up there too. Here's the main things to look at. Lysosome. Some means body. Okay, so it's a some like soma. Soma means body. So some is usually some kind of form of body of something. Lyso means to tear apart again. This is a catabolic thing. Think of lysol. It cleans things, right? So lysosomes help clean things inside the cell. Ribosomes, um, that we get a little bit more into some technical stuff, and it's like a little uh, uh, little 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 tool guy think of the minions right i did a little bit part i think I, some of my videos have that in there too you the minions who make um proteins right and so this is the mrna and rna all the stuff you've heard of R ribonucleic acid rna and then we have the mitochondria mitochondria or mitochondrion that's the powerhouse of the cell every time you hear that mitochondrion just powerhouse of the cell okay lysosomes think of lysol cleaning up stuff okay ribosomes a little bit different we'll get into that though okay so tissues, tissues where we're talking like histology. Histology is the study of tissues. Uh, so parenchymal versus stromal. Stromal is the structure. Stromal structure, right? So that's the thing that everything fits in. And then parenchymal, the parenchyma, like you have lung parenchyma is the useful parts of the lung. That would be like the alveoli. You can also have the parenchyma of the liver and all these other organs too. So there are in the whole grand scheme of things in the body we have four count on four kinds of tissues um not like not like like tissues but you know what i mean right like tissues yeah so we have epithelial epi on top of things easy to remember that one right so it covers it's a cover one very very well distributed in the body um very poor blood flow you know comparatively okay connective tissue connective tissue includes Ligaments, which hold bone to bone, tendons, which hold muscle to bone, bones, which are bones, and um, blood actually is a connective tissue. The red blood cells and the plasma, which is the liquid form of blood, that's the part that you will actually um, uh, get into with connective tissue. Muscular, of course, that's muscles, right? Muscles, we have muscles all over the place, about 600 different muscles. And then nervous system is, of course, the nerves. Interestingly, in uh, oriental therapy or what we would call acupuncture theory, the old ways anyway, the brain and the spinal cord and the big nerves like the sciatic nerve and the big brachial nerves and that kind of stuff were considered part of the marrow and they were considered useless. So they didn't, they didn't see the, the control system of the brain. They saw like the personality and those kind of things showing up in different parts of the, the organs. So you have like liver was anger and stuff like that. Totally not this class, but it's really cool stuff. You can watch my other videos. I'm doing a whole video thing on uh, brains uh, somewhere. I got them in here. Um, I did brains somewhere where we're going through the different portions of the brain and how like things like meditation and stress um, affect those. So organs, I see, remember why I, when I said before, visceral or visceral or viscera, viscera, eviscerate to cut out your organs, right? Um, or organs or, or organs. Those are groups of tissues working together. Um, da, 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 da. endocardium is an epithelium myocardium so whenever you see the word myo up here oh look i can highlight that's cool whenever you see the word myo that means muscle cardi like means heart okay so if you like cardi b you love heart cardi b is because of heart yeah there we go something whatever parts of organs so the apex apex is the top so we have the, the places they're used mostly is the apex of the lung so one of the things you're looking for in an x-ray, when you see an x-ray from here up, say, you want to see the apex of the lung to see it. And some tumors like to hang out in there. Some cancers hang out in the apex, the top part, okay, of the lung. Um, it generally, it's it's the most superior or up, up top one, the apex. Body, um, somatosome, corpo, so corpus, corpus luteum and things like that. Those are areas of the, uh, those are called, those are bodies, okay? There's soma again, like lysosome, right? We went through there. Um, it's usually the, the kind of like the biggest part of everything, right? Base, uh, the fundus is the base. You have a fundus in the stomach and you have a fundus in like the uterus. And that's really, there's a couple other places you may see it. Uh, you may see it in renal stuff and maybe in like splenic or something like that. And then fornix, fornix, uh, attaches two different things and that's where we see it in the the female reproductive system okay so let's go to the next one 
Is this specialist and specialties? Okay, anyway. Body systems. Okay, so there's 11 body systems. Well, technically, there's 12 because there's male and female. And that's biology, guys. We're not getting into all that other stuff. So <laughs> if we look at musculoskeletal, muscular, that's all connective tissue and muscular tissue, right? So it's the muscles and the skeleton. That's the next chapter we get to go over, right? The integumentary maintains integrity is the way to think of it. Keep stuff on the inside, on the inside, and the stuff on the outside, on the outside. That's your skin, guys. Uh, largest organ if you spread it out, right? Um, of course, if you take your, your like, skin and spread it out, it'd be about the size of a small carpet, and you'd be dead, probably. But anyway, gastrointestinal, that's so, so gastro means stomach, intestinal is stomach, and organs, all that stuff related to it. In here, generally, in anatomy, we're also talking about the mouth, everything having to do with the mouth all the way to the anus. The anus is the end. So we're going to talk about the labial, the lips here, the dentate, the teeth, okay, the gingiva, which is the the gums in through here. You guys are here, gingivitis, uh, the glosso which is tongue. And there's a there's a bunch of glands inside there. There's a bunch of muscles inside there. And then we have the the, the oral pharynx, the nasopharynx, and the laryngopharynx. And then that all turns into either the trachea right here in the front or goes back in the back. And the, the trachea goes to the respiratory system we come to later, right? Next one here is urinary. Urinary includes the kidneys. There's two of them. The ureters, there's two of those, goes down to the bladder. Everybody has one. And then there's urethra. And depending on if you're male or female, it has a different length. Reproductive, that's the two parts. So there has to be a, a XX and an XY in order to make a new being. And that's where we talk about those kind of things. So that's where we get into um, the reproductive structure and also the reproductive physiology. And there's a lot of timing involved in that stuff too. Blood, lymphatic, and immune systems. Uh, we would say like mostly the immune system. We're talking about the lymph system. And the lymph system where you're going to include lymph glands up through here. We have lymph glands and lymph nodes and things like that. You may have heard of those if you know someone who had maybe a cancer and had to have lymph nodes removed. Also, we have um, the blood, different parts of the blood, the plasma, the liquid part. Remember, that's connective tissue. And then the red blood cells, the white blood cells, the platelets, and all these other cool things in there. And then the spleen and the appendix and some other stuff. Now, that stuff is actually kind of changing pretty quickly because we're starting to understand a little bit more about um, the the human biome. The biome is the amount and the, the, all the different uh, bacteria and, and, and normal viruses on you and, and normal fungi and all this kind of stuff that live in your body symbiotically. Cardiovascular, we're talking about the vascular, which means vessels, and then cardio means heart. Okay, so the heart and vessels. Respiratory connected definitely to that one. That's going to be the lungs, the trachea, the all the pharynxes and stuff like that, the nasal pharynx and stuff, um, and some other issues we'll get into with that. Changes the pH of the blood, blah, blah, blah. Nervous and behavioral. So they threw in, I don't know why they threw in behavioral in there. That really doesn't belong there. That's psychology or psychiatry. Different animal doesn't really fit well in anatomy, although we can start to locate some of those things, like I said, with the brain. Nervous system, which would include the brain, the spinal cord, the peripheral nerves, the central nerves, the autonomic system and stuff like that. You don't have to write all this stuff down. I'm just like blasting you with it so you know where it is. You've heard it before. Special senses are going to be like the eye, right? The ear, the taste and touch and things like that. And then endocrine. Endocrine. So you think of crying like like chronology is it's inside timing. And so there's a, it's a slower working system than, say, the, the blood system or the, the cardiovascular, but it has some of the same functions. Very interesting stuff, actually. So specialist is a bit of cytology is one who studies, so we have a cyto, right? We had cells. And tissues is histo. Okay, so histologist. You don't hear that very much. No, I don't, I don't think I've ever met anybody who said that they were histologist. I don't know. Maybe. No. Anatomist. I'm definitely an anatomist. I'm part of like a couple different uh, anatomy societies and stuff. So I'm considered an anatomist. I've done a lot of dissections of humans and other things and uh, never helped name anything yet. Doesn't name after me yet. Yet. I'll find some. No, there's actually, if we haven't found it yet, it means that it's, we're dumb because we've torn the body apart nine days, to, nine ways to Sunday. We we have torn the, bar, the body apart completely and labeled identified, categorized everything. Now, what ha does happen sometimes is anatomists will say like, you know what, we need to change the name of this because of 
whatever. We're trying to get rid of person names because those are hard to understand and hard to remember, or sometimes they're easy to remember because it's a name, but it's, it's not specific and doesn't help you clinically. Uh, physiology, however, changes all the time because we're learning more and more and more about like how like prions work and how uh, uh, the immune system works. So there's a lot going on about that right now. We don't really know a lot. We think we do, but we don't. So studying the body, we have pathology. Pathology is the study of what goes wrong with the body, okay? A biopsy, now this is opsies are to, look, anything optic, opsy, uh, we're gonna do a biopsy on you. So we're gonna take a little piece, uh, cut a piece of you, right? So take two, make, make you into two pieces now. And take that biopsy, look at it through a, through a microscope in a histology lab, right, perhaps, or a cytology lab, depending on what you're doing. Find out what it's doing. Is it acting normal or abnormal? Necropsy, necro means dead. So necropsy versus autopsy, a little bit different. We generally, it's funny because like autopsies happen on people and that's to uh, categorize and, and determine cause of death. A necropsy would be more of a, a looking at the dead body, okay, for, you know, more mostly scientific reasons, so... Uh, well, well there's all scientific reasons, whatever. Uh, lesson two, two, body positions, body cavities, regions, quadrants, and planes. Okay, this is easy. Um, recognize and use terms associated with the positional and directional vocabulary. Recognize and use terms associated with the body cavities. Recognize and use terms associated with the abdominal, pelvic, regions, and quadrants. First on that. Okay, we're going to do that one with this guy again. Okay, so belly button, center mass. Okay, so we're going to go over this. Let me see if it goes through today. Recognize these terms of body. We talked about this one, anatomical position. Uh, there we go. Point toes. There, that's the anatomical position, that guy right there. Okay, right up here. Right this one. So that this guy is in anatomical position. We can see the different areas. The ventral. Ventral means front. Dorsal means back. Head and neck. Uh, why does it have head and neck in there? I don't know. Buccal, cephalic, cervical, cranial. So buccal. Okay. Cephalic cervical, cranial, okay, um, facial, frontal, mental, nasal, ocular, oral, otic. Okay, there we go. So go through those, rewind real quick and go through, you're like buccal, like see that guy? Buccal, okay. Cephalic is the whole head, cervical, the neck, cranial, just the cranium. Okay, facial, just the face. Frontal, looking at my front. Mental, see, now him, they have mentals here. You think, wow, well, mental there. That, that's an easy way to get wrong on a test. Mental, okay, you know, mental, you're thinking, right? The thinking guy, right? The mental. Nasal, easy one, right? Ocular, eye, uh, oral, mouth. It's, you know those ones, right? Ventral service anatomy, too. So we have an abdominal, right? Axillary is not really there, but this is axillary, is the armpit. And think of like axe, remember the spray? That's how you do that. Now look at coxal. Coxal is an important one because we're going to see later, we're going to see coccyx. So coxal, you, do they have it on here correctly? They, wow, holy crap, they do not. So here's the trick. This is coxal right there. Hip. Hip is coxal. Okay. Hip is coxal. Hip is coxal. Deltoid up here in the shoulder, right? Inguinal down in the groin. Uh, mammary. That's the chest, the breasts, actually. Uh, pelvic, that's down, that's what your underwear cover is your pelvis. Uh, sternal, right there. Thoracic, this. And umbilical is your belly button, okay? Some of you have itties, some of you had outies, blah, blah, blah. Ventral service, okay, again, anti-cubital. You guys are going to see this one a lot. So the anti-cubital is right, right there. Anti-cubital, right there, okay? Brachial, you break, you, you see, you break your arms, man. You're strong as a... Uh, in, in Spanish, it's a brazo, which is a similar term. Carpal. Carpal. You ride a car, you drive a car like this, like with your, with your, with your wrist bent. Carpal. Like people get carpal tunnel. Easy one. Manual. We don't use that. We say manual labor, perhaps. Uh, Palmer. That's that right there. And then digital. These. You also call them phalanges. We, don't, we could say digital injury or something like that. Phalangeal. Okay. Now here, this is a little different. Look at this one. So... If we look up, look right up here. So crural um, is on the front of the shin. Okay, femoral, thigh, patellar, knee, uh, pedal, foot. Like you 
has press the pedals, right? Planter, you walk on plants. That's the bottom of your foot. And then tarsal, um, that's the, the ankle. When you step in tar, it goes all the way up to your ankle. Let's think of it that way. Kind of easy one. Dorsal service is the backside. Dorsal, like dorsal fin of a shark, right? Uh, so a chromium, like is this here, the shoulder, shoulder blade, the chromium process is right here. Dorsal, that's the whole back. Gluteal, that's your rump. That's what you're sitting on right now. Lumbar, that's your lower back. Nuchal, right here. Nu so there's a nuchal ligament that goes from the back of the skull. You can actually see there's this thing right here. This is the skull. Okay, this guy. We turn around. There's this thing called here called the the episode. This is the external occipital protuberance, the EOP, or the bump of knowledge. And there's a there's a ligament that comes down this way. And this goes right down here like this, called the nuchal ligament. And there you go. So perineal, that's where the sun don't shine. That's at the bottom of everything. Um, yeah, there you go. I mean, for those of you, it's called, it's also called a taint because it taint quite this and taint quite that. Sacral is on the sacrum that's in the back right here. Not pelvic. Pelvic is all of it. Sacrum is right in the middle. Scapular here, acromial here. Oops, sorry. Sacral. Scapular. Acromial. Okay. Vertebral has to do with the spine. Uh, Alecranon. So, alecranal. So, alecranal or olecranal. This alecranal is the true thing. Right there, that's your elbow. Okay, that's your weenus or whatever you want to call it. But it's electronon. Okay, it's electronon process right here. There's an electronon fossa back in here. Popliteal has to do with the back of your knee. And then surl. See, I see like right in through here, you could see maybe it says surl, surly calf. So can I increase the size a little bit? Nope. Yeah, let me increase the size. Surl, surly calf. That's the only way I could ever remember it. Surly calves on the back. Okay, now directional terms we have anterior is always the front and the back is always the posterior. So now there's two different things, anterior and posterior or dorsal and ventral. That's Latin and Greek all at the same time. So don't worry about it. Just you have to remember the dorsal, you know, and, and, and posterior the same thing. Okay, we move on. So superior always towards the head. Superior, superior, superior on this guy, okay? On this guy, superior, superior, right? Inferior, you could say cephalic or cephalid this way, towards the head. Inferior caudal towards the feet. That's the, That always messes people up, so we want to always go on that one. Medial towards the middle, lateral towards the outside. You're going to see that one a lot. Ipsy. Ipsy means same. So same. Ipsy lateral is on the same side. Your right hand is ipsilateral to so your right foot, hopefully. Um, contralateral is the opposite side. So you can have right and left or contralaterally. Positional direction. Unilateral. One side. Bilateral. Both sides. It's pretty easy, but it takes practice. So play with it, right? What's ipsy lateral? One side. What's contralateral? The opposite side. Contra, contrasting to, right? Um, bilateral, both sides. Like you use both thumbs, bilateral thumbs. Okay, proximal towards you, the proximus. Uh, you say like proximity alert, proximity alert, right? It means something getting close to you, right? It's getting closer. Distal, in the distance, far away. Usually only for arms and legs. You, could, you don't have distal on your face, okay? You could say... You can't really. I mean, you could say that the nose is center point, so you could say like the, the eyes are distal to the nose, but that's not true. They're actually superior and lateral to the, the nose, if we want to be very specific. And it's important to be specific with your terms because you can really mess things up if you don't know which side or whatever anything is happening, right? Um, superficial on the serous and then deep. Well, that's pretty easy. Okay, there we go. Supine. Supine. You can put a bowl of soup on your chest, right? And it won't spill. There you go. And pro, like pro swimmers, they swim face down. So that's pro, pronate. So when you have hands, right, this is supinate. Right, you can hold your bowl of soup. Okay, you hold your bowl of soup like this. This is supinate to sup, uh, supine, right? And this is pro, because a pro would hold a basketball. It's not a basketball, but hold a basketball like this, like pronate, okay? Has the hands and the body. You can lay prone. The patient was was discovered in the supine position, right? 
with uh, Ipsilateral damage or something. I don't know. Uh, Dextro and Sinistro. So interesting one here. Positional Dextro. So right and left. So we usually say Dextro and Levulo now. But it used to be Sinister because it was considered the bad side. The left side was the bad side. Uh, for some reason, it's just that's old tradition. We don't say it anymore because there's left-handed people, and they're not bad. They just they just write with their left hand. That's the difference. Some people, when I was even a kid, would be trained to like put their right hand in their or their left hand in their pocket, so they'd have to write with their right hand. It was very difficult for little kids. Well, some of them got really messed up. It was really terrible. Positional and directional terms. Efferent is exiting. E for exit. Okay, efferent. You already did, you already did this one dorsal cavities so we have two different cavities on the dorsum the back side that's going to be the cranial cavity with the brain and the spinal cavity ventral cavities thoracic abdominal pelvic okay and uh then pelvic so abdominal pelvic is kind of one because there's no real definite demarcation okay between the thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity is the diaphragm okay diaphragm is a big muscle that goes right underneath here okay and so that would be our big one on that one but we don't worry too much about that do we because we know it you know it i hope ventral cavity thoracic so different areas here we have plural cavity we're gonna get all in this different kind of cavity stuff i've done that in other videos you can watch those if you really are bored out of your skull put them on here's 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 a hint so when you go down to this little corner right right about there Okay, there's gonna be a little like gear thing and you click that and it'll say like speed, playback speed. I talk pretty fast, fortunately, I think, because I hate it when people talk slow. But if you put it at 1.25 or 1.5, it'll go super fast. So that's, that's actually, so you get one and a half times uh, the speed of everything. Okay, anyway, ventral, front, thoracic, upper. Okay, we're looking at mediastinum. Mediastinum is this here. It's actually this section, right? Like this right through here so inside that is the heart the pericardium the uh main tubes that come up the esophagus and the trachea coming up there's so some main vessels okay um and then plural is is outside here so he's here remember the word pleurisy we talked about that way before it has to do with lungs abdominal we have the diaphragm which is also the the large muscle that is like a it's considered like a, a um it's a oh man I can't believe it. come on man it's it's umbrella shaped there we go peritoneum peritoneum is the covering of the intestines they have the parietal peritoneum on the outside and the visceral peritoneum viscera remember gut organ holds that all together and then pelvic has all that pelvic stuff in there right abdominal pelvic regions this is this is important to know for the testing but you don't use it clinically okay look at the um, uh, umbilical cord right here Where is it? right up straight up up there umbilical cord right up there and then down here is we have a left iliac notice on, our, on, our, on your right side right because you're looking at them in the anatomical position notice there's a word up the top there look at the top one left hypochondriac region you're like what hypochondriac hypochondriac means people are faking it well th that's because people that usually faked an, an illness would grab their belly you know and say oh it hurts here and there's really nothing there to hurt um most many times you have of course liver pain and stuff like that but people who would fake it called malingerers would be um would have those those pains always in that kind of section so it was like they always had hypochondrial pain and they were considered a hypochondriac which is a, a kind of a misnomer anyway right lumbar lumbar that's really not those are loins is what that's really called too but we don't use that word either and then hypogastric below the stomach well duh it's below the stomach so is the umbilical region remember umbilical in the middle and you just gotta like work your way around okay so it's top hypochondriac chondro means means cartilage so just under the cartilage right and then you have the lumbar region like go reach around your back that's where you reach around your lumbar is right in that area and then the iliac is in the in the front there we just, you know that one that's an easy one to do uh quadrants this is what you're going to use uh, more um clinically okay upper right quadrant lower right quadrant you're gonna have to know what's in each quadrant so it's this is a really good uh what, what the hell is monroe's point oh well, these are mcburney's point and mcrose point. those are for auscultation when you listen okay with a uh um a stethoscope that, that's old terms man those are terms that i almost i never see anymore but anyway there you go planes of the body sagittal 
Okay, but this is sagittal. This is sagittal. This is sagittal. This is sagittal. anything like this. Okay, we talked about the dude laying like this, cutting this way. Okay, cutting this way. That's those are sagittal cuts. Cutting this way are sagittal cuts on this person. Okay, they're showing a mid sagittal section of the brain right up there. Um, and then we have what a frontal. Frontal, you're going to look at the front, but you're going to cut this way. Okay, this is frontal. Frontal. Frontal, right? Does it make sense? Okay, so you're always going to look at the front part of the body. Coronal, as you like a little, so the Spanish queen wears a crown that goes like this. Not like this. That's English. This is Spanish. So it's Latin. The corona. The corona of the sun. You have the sun up there, and you see all the light right around it. That's a corona. And that's um, uh, why we say corona. We say coronal plane. Transverse, okay? That is a transverse cut. Right there, Dara. If I cut your head off, that's a transverse cut. I cut you in half, that's a transverse cut. Okay? All the way. It doesn't matter where. And that's it. So that's that's the whole chapter there. That's chapter two. I'm going to go ahead and hurry up and download this. And then um, uh, download and upload and I'm not going to fix it. I'm not going to mess with it at all. I'm just going to load it up there. And you guys can uh, go from there. I'm going to do the the next part for the next week. That's this week. is week two already. Yikes. Well, I don't know. It depends on when you're watching this. <sighs> do your homework. Don't forget, when you're doing your discussions, increase the conversation, guys. Okay? Don't forget to like this one because that helps me uh, see what I'm doing right and doing wrong. If there's something I missed, let me know. Uh, I'll be able to help that out and fix it and stuff and get all this stuff going. So here we are. We're, you know, well into it, doing really well. You can watch the other videos, get some of the same information. There's a lot of overlap in the beginnings of anatomy and terminology because they want to get you used to the words. So get used to the words. Run through this another time. Maybe listen to it when you're asleep. And now you can wake up and be happy and have all of your um, rest and all your brains are all now full of good information. Talk to you guys later. Bye.